Oh, hey, that's how I put some comics. All right, so I picked up a couple of fat stacks of comics from Emerald City Comic Con a couple weeks ago, like almost a month ago now. I haven't had a lot of time to make a video, but uh, finally the family is gone. They're out of the house for a bit, so take a few minutes here to show off a little bit of what I picked up. Maybe intersplice with a little bit of GoPro footage that I had there. It's all mostly terrible, but uh, I'll do my best to see if I can uh, grab a couple nice shots. <laughs> a theme of that whole trip for me which was uh unpreparedness when i went on the trip i had four days of work uh, i do four days and four nights of like 12 hour shifts and immediately from work i had to go into a town called chilliwack to do some training and then after that trip i went into down to seattle to do some uh to do the comic book trip there and i was planning to stay i stayed overnight one night there i was going to stay for two but ended up uh just because i was away for the family for a while already and uh, just pretty tired and like I say unprepared I just decided I didn't want to stay for the last day so I uh, just ended up doing Emerald Comic Con for one day and then came home so yeah what I would have liked uh, I was kind of trying to pay attention to who the creators and stuff were gonna be there but what I would have liked to do is uh, have a few more books that I brought up to get signed been graded would have been nice to bring some of my nicer books down to get graded but um, I didn't know exactly who was gonna be there I knew a few of the people but then uh, sort of last minute it seemed like there's a couple that were added I only ended up getting one uh, picked up and signed by Chris Claremont. So, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was cool to be there, and I think it didn't seem as busy as last time I was there. I went for the Saturday show, and uh, which is often the busiest day, the biggest, busiest, and I got there fairly early in the morning, so they sort of herd you into these little corrals of groups of people of like maybe 500 people each. So I ended up being at the very back of the first corral, which was cool. You sort of wait around. They provide entertainment there's these r2d2 robots driving around and doing dance parties and stuff and the people i was in line with weren't obnoxiously annoying nerds which is always nice uh i'm always i like being around nerdy people i myself am very nerdy but some people take it too far i had a chance to meet up with my boy a fellow youtuber dead clone this is probably a few yeah. bucks but... another canadian guy we had a great time uh, it was nice to have somebody there to hang out with, uh, not as fun to just cruise around by yourself. So, but I'll go through a bunch of the stuff I picked up. Let's start with this. This is the first book I picked up. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 50. Uh, $80 price tag obviously stands out, but if you see the little note there, it says, First appearance of the Kingpin, two pieces cut out, does not affect the story. So I look through, besides that, the book is really nice. I generally have... A really hard time uh, with anything cut out and stuff like that I almost always avoid that like the plague but this is a book that the Kingpin isn't the character I really really love I like him he's sort of one of those key spider-man characters it's important book to get in my under one uh, my one to 100 amazing spider-man run uh, and I just didn't want to spend some of the prices it looks like I actually been looking it's cooled down since uh, that daredevil phase where I think this book was really really expensive for a while like a $500 book but uh, yeah for under 100 bucks I got this and then I, I packaged it with a bunch of other stuff and I think I ended up getting like all that stuff for 80 bucks. I can't remember which ones exactly I had packaged with it, but... And this is just such an awesome, iconic John Romita cover. Man, I would love to see John Romita in person and meet him. He's like one of these friggin' legends. I think a lot of those, these other guys, uh, they end up going to New York Comic Con. So who knows? Maybe one year I'll try to book a trip out to New York and do do a New York trip in New York Comic Con. That's pretty major key uh, to get off the Amazing Spider-Man list. So super pumped on that. And yeah, the cutouts are fairly minor. They're still cutouts, but what else? Oh, got a couple of these. So this I got, I remember the first time I went down to um, to this uh, Comic-Con, I think it was like three years ago, and they had just announced that they were going to do a Valiant movie universe, still waiting to see what's happening with that. But So my first day, I was there for two days, and my first day I was looking through all the dollar bins and quarter bins for the uh, Valiant first appearances just to get them cheap. So this is one I ne had never found. This at the time was sort of considered the first appearance of Ninjak. And so I got two of these for, they were 25 in 25 cent bins. So two of these for 25 cents each. Uh, they're sort of like BF copies. 
Um, they weren't bagged or anything when I bought them, but I guess now it's kind of because there was his number seven. Yeah, Bloodshot number seven. Number six is sort of his first appearance. This is his first full appearance in costume. Whatever that means, but yeah, 25 cent keys are always fun to get. Uh, I, they're, these Valiant uh, keys are kind of fun to collect. This cover, I don't know what it is. It's, it's kind of, it feels awkward to me, just uh, the layout of it all. I'm not a huge fan of this cover, but uh, Ninjak's kind of a cool character in that Valiant universe. What else? Oh, this is Trash Bridge number one. This was a, uh, who was I speaking with? Tim Seeley. Uh, and so this is made by some of the creators who made like God Hates Astronauts and those kind of things, which I'm not a huge fan of God Hates Astronauts. It's a little bit too random for me, but art, uh, the art is always really fun and silly. So this is another series they did and it was like a one in 500 uh, run they did or something on this as their pre thing. So I got the, the, the creators there to all sign it and um, I think it was like 10 bucks for this book and he was pushing it pretty hard on me and, and trying to sell it. So I like to support these guys when they do their own thing and clearly they're passionate about it. So they come to these uh, cons and, and that's a lot of times the big thing, they, the big goal they want to do there is push this stuff they've created and come up with themselves. So it's fun to support stuff like that because that's where you get all the cool, fresh new ideas is by supporting creators uh, outside of sort of the big companies. So yeah, that was pretty cool and got the doodles and everything. Uh, what else? Oh, so these are some $2 bin pickups. So they had a, one guy had a whole bunch of $2 bins. And I think, so I packaged up a bunch of, from the $2 bins and then got a deal, got another few bucks knocked off. So they're probably like $1.50 each. But yeah, Silver Surfer number one from, from the second run. Not a super valuable book, but uh, I like this run. So uh, yeah, for two bucks, why not? And big series of Saga runs. So I, I had collected Saga till like 25 or 26 before I moved. And then... Uh, no longer had access to a comic shop. So these are just a bunch of the filler uh, issues to catch up. Saga's one I like to collect every issue of. Uh, just awesome art, awesome storytelling. Uh, sort of the image creator owned stuff at its finest, I think. 35, 34, beautiful coloring on that. This is like my favorite type of coloring. But Dawn, I love Dawn, man. I'm a Dawn guy. 38, 39 seems like this year they did a lot with like dark shadows and stuff though they always had the bright colors on the first uh issues but now they they sort of gone back to the colors but then added these dark gradient shadows 40 41 i guess there was like a misprint of this where the shadows were just too dark and it looked really bad so remember that was kind of collectible for a while but this is the i guess i don't know if it's a second print or just one of the ones that wasn't screwed up 42 43 this to me is like everything i love about saga it's like everything you know but just that sci-fi twist on it with like she's riding some sort of rainbow zebra 45 oh yeah and also i got this pax americana from that grant morrison uh, was it called multiversity i remember when this came out they were like a little too expensive for me but i was curious about it because grant morrison always does kind of interesting different stuff and this was like a director's cut so it's going to have hopefully some extras and stuff in there. I always like to see the creative process, especially with a guy like Grant Morrison, who just, he thinks outside of the box quite a bit, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't for me, but uh, should be an interesting read. So excited to look through that. The guy was asked 650, something like that. Something ridiculous, like that. Well, yeah, and then a couple of just early Captain Marvel Bronze Age, Silver, 12 Cent Silver Age, uh, Captain Marvel number 8, and Captain Marvel number 19. That one's pretty beat up. But, you know, you can't leave that stuff, I think, when it's like a buck or two for, like, the Silver Age stuff. Like, how can you leave that behind? <sighs> Next stack. All right. We're firing through this. So, Chris Claremont was there. So, my man, Dead Clone, was nice enough. He waited in line. I was kind of humming and hawing if I wanted to meet Chris Claremont because I'm not... Like, I haven't read a lot of this X-Men stuff. I know he's sort of that legend from this era. But most of these stories I just know from the cartoon show and uh, from the covers and stuff. So I have a few of these, but I didn't... Uh, you know, man, Dead Clone, he's like, hey, I saw a really, really good first appearance for cheap at this booth. Come check it out. So he he had spotted this. This is the first appearance of the Hellfire Club. Uh, what is it? Uncanny X-Men 132. So, sure, great. Grab that for 10 bucks with some other stuff. Uh, again combo it all up and get a bit of a discount so he was nice enough to stand in line while i'm walking around looking at artists because i wasn't sure i was even going to meet him and then i went up and met up with him again and there he was like two people away so I'm like, oh well i'll get a sign so i sort of i sort of slugged my way in there but 
uh, Chris Claremont's always super cool, uh, really awesome, passionate guy. And I think his autograph was like five bucks. And then he asked you to make a donation to the uh, is it Comic Alliance or Creators Alliance or whatever. So but yeah, so you signed it right across the title there. And granted, Chris Claremont's one of these legendary writers. So those are the guys I always like to to meet and get their autographs. I really wish there's some more classic Spider-Man artists and creators there, but uh, fortunately no, because I have that Amazing Spider-Man 301. I like to get signed by any big Amazing Spider-Man creator. Oh yeah, I found this. This is one of these ones that's been sort of on the radar, but not one I really actively seek out. I just, uh, it's one that I'm like, oh, if I find it for the right price, I'll grab it. So this was listed at 20 bucks. I can't even remember when, who I got this from. This might have been part of the, that when I bought the Kingpin book, that part of that combo. I can't remember when I found this, but yeah. What is this? This is like a nice, uh, probably fine copy, a little bit of wear on the edges and stuff, but Shang-Chi. So yeah, just one of those early uh, Bronze Age first appearances, and he kind of always sticks around cool character. I always like how Marvel just sort of like picks up on whatever's popular and then makes a character based around that. Like so, westerns are popular. Stanley's like, yeah, let's make western. Who wants to do it? Kung Fu movies are popular uh, in this era, so like, yeah, let's make Kung Fu guy. That'll be great. So uh, and just, I just always love the Bronze Age, big bold titles, bright colors, very kinetic sort of scene. A great cover there. This really hits a lot of the, the marks on first appearances that I love is like the characters on the cover. It's a bold cover, bright colors, very active, and it's sort of based around him. So, all right. And then I picked up a sweet run of Frank and Castle. So Frank and Castle is one of these characters I do not hear a lot about, but I freaking I was reading it on uh, Rick Remender's run of the Punisher on the Marvel Unlimited app. And guys, if you haven't read that run, it's so good. It starts out really hardcore, serious, sort of standard punisher -y stuff. And then it goes a little bit off the rails and he becomes, he gets killed and resurrected by the Legion of Monsters as uh, Frankenstein uh, and Punisher. And it's just great. It's really, and it's Tony Moore who, you know how if you get into an artist for a while, you sort of have an emotional connection with that artist. So when you get Rick Remender and Tony Moore working together, it's unbeatable. So this is the first appearance of... Uh, Frankencastle, Punisher number 11, and this is uh, the second print, which is like the Tony Moore cover. So pumped to get that because Tony Moore is sort of the, the major artist on that. And another good book is number, that's, so this is the first appearance with the normal cover, 11. What else we got here? Uh, 13, Fort, ooh, I'm lose my books. My stack is getting too high. They're falling over. Uh, what is that number? You guys can read 14. And the villain in this series is really good as well. 15, they have these like Japanese monster hunters that are going around trying to kill all the monsters led by this crazy monster himself. That's a beautiful cover there. 16, 17, 18, and then this, I love this cover, man. This is friggin' sick. Look at that with the Legion of Monsters. I don't know who the artist is on this. I should look that up first. But man, just beautiful. This is the main villain up here. But this is the last appearance and sort of the return of regular Punisher. What else? There was a booth that had like a lot of like really overpriced books, but then everything was half off. I don't know if you guys seen that book. So like every standard book was like six dollars or more and then but everything was probably half price so it ends up being like normal prices but uh, i already have a copy of this but i always love this cover this is the civil war uh amazing spider-man it collects like three issues but it's got the sketch variant i think it's uh not adam hughes what's the other guy's name Oh, it's gonna bug me. I'll remember it as soon as I click the button. Oh yeah, so, but this is just like a really sick uh, sketch variant of Spider-Man and his uh, his sweet suit there. So this one, so this, I think he had it as anything $6 or under was a dollar and anything listed higher than that was half price. So this one was listed at 16, so I got it for eight, which is almost too high for me, but uh, especially because I have it already, but it's really sweet, so. You know, this could go up in value, I guess, with the new Spider-Man armor and all that crap. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man annual. So this one was six bucks. This one was a dollar. Uh, annual number 12. Do annuals count? The bait goes on. I don't know. 
Uh, okay, part of the Kingpin lot. Also, I got this. Was the one of the other things I got. So this is uh, first appearance of Angela, but this is the newsstand variant. So yeah, super pumped on that. Finally, I think my Spawn collection may be complete because I got Spawn number one in newsstand and regular, and then uh, her in newsstand and regular, and then the first ten issues or something like that. But and first appearance of Cygor, who is the most badass Spawn character ever. Cygor, watch for him. But yeah, so on these ones, I think like um, they are actually different. Like I don't know if the, I think the ads inside might be slightly different, and then the paper stock and everything is a little bit different as well. And these are a lot more rare than uh, the regular ones. So yeah, look for this little barcode because uh, they're kind of fun little rare variants. And with the movie, like these books might get expensive. I don't know. Probably maybe not as much with her. She might show up at some point in some of the Marvel uh, Marvel stuff because she's a Marvel character now. But Okay, so I was looking for Werewolf by Night 32 for like the whole time and uh, I found one for like 500 US and I was like humming and hawing over it but then again my man Dead Clone was looking up, he has some app where it tells you about the average sale prices of the last whatever six months so he's like yeah that's you know a little high uh, and I, I think maybe 600 I was trying to get it for five for like a, a fine copy. I kind of wanted a graded copy of it, but there was a few around, but they're all marked pretty high as con prices. Just generally those big keys tend to be priced pretty high because because people will pay them. Um, and often I think I find the best times go on like the Sunday if you're there and wait till the last day. Because if guys haven't made a lot of money, they want to recover some. And if they have made a lot of money, then they're often happy to like cut a bit of a deal because they're in a good mood or whatever. So I had been looking for Werewolf by Night 32. He sort of talked me out of it, which is probably for the best because uh, they were a little bit overpriced there, the ones I was looking at. Uh, so he left and then I was still, I wanted to buy a big key because I get such a rare opportunity to be in places like this where I can have access to books like that. Uh, so I went to another booth and then I spotted a guy who had, he had three of these. So, um, Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of the Punisher. Like I said, I've been sort of fanboying over Punisher and Frankencastle and all that. So I never cared about this book before, but like since I've been into it, I've been really feeling it. So this one's fairly grimy. I don't know what the grade is on. The back is kind of a mess, but pre front presents pretty well. Uh, it's got... I don't know how to explain it. It's just got lots of wear around the edge. It's not in those really thick, gross... Uh, creases but it looks like it was just sort of lying in a stack for a long time probably before anyone noticed it and someone picked it up somewhere but really pops so they had this for they're asking 400 for that and then they had this as well which i spotted which is like a really sharp daredevil 131 like really nice high grade book and they were asking a hundred on that so um yeah it was i was quite interested because I wanted I've wanted this book for a while and I've been looking at it and that's a good price for the grade this was in so it was near the end of the day like they were shutting down I was gonna be I think I was driving home that night I can't remember so I was humming high I offered 400 for the pair and he said I think 460 for the pair is what he could do and then I sort of be, was like all right let's do 440 for the pair so and then he accepted that so Two sweet yellow covers, uh, really important keys for me uh, to grab. So really stoked to get these books and uh, feeling good because I find I was able to get some bigger keys. So probably could if I looked harder and had more access to places get these books for maybe better prices. But uh, for sort of where I'm living now and how much access I have to, to keys and stuff, I was quite happy with getting that for that price. So yeah, that's sort of the, the main... That's sort of it for my haul for that thing. This has gone on a little longer than I hoped, but that's okay. Um, great times there. Oh, I got to show you my sweet, sweet Tony Parker original uh, thing. Stand by. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to show this off. So Tony Parker, just some comic book artist. I basically found him in Artist Alley. I was cruising around trying to find someone maybe to do a commission for me. Uh, and I genuinely did not know what he had done before or anything, but his style and everything was exactly sort of the style I liked. So talked with him and I think he had, it was like $40 for a commission and then 60 if you wanted to add shading to it and then 100 if you wanted coloring and stuff on it. 
So I had him do the the one with shading and stuff on it. So I got this sick picture of Frank and Castle with uh, the fire and everything in the back. So really happy with how this turned out. I want to grab a frame for this and get it up on the wall there. Love his, the expression on uh, Punisher's face is so good. And then you have all the details with the gears and all that crap. He's just a really cool character visually, I think. So yeah, pumped on that. Uh, really awesome to get my first commission I've ever done there. So uh, yeah, pumped on that. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep buying comics. Excited to see your videos. Peace out.